What's up, y'all? All right, so uh, this first part of this video is actually the continuation from last week. If you guys watched last week, you will have said that I said, hey, stay tuned for part two later today. Mm, yeah, mm, this part right here. Mm, okay. Mm, yeah, that didn't happen. I know I, I know I do that a lot. Mm, okay. Sorry. Part two later today. Well, part two, actually, I got a good majority of it shot, but it got rained out. But I figured I would show you a couple of clips because this video that I'm gonna do to review these clippers, these hand pruners, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push this off a little bit because I wanna do it a little bit more justice. But in the meantime, here's some of the fun that I had with it, and then we'll get right to the tips. This is the one that I prefer, and I'll show you why. And they see you might ask, wasn't well, that dangerous that they're always open all the time? And the answer is no. You just use the scabbard to hold them shut, see? See, there you go. Now when you need to take them out, they're ready to go. You can just use them. Even better, though, is this scabbard that I prefer because I just like the way everything slides down in there real nice. And it actually still holds them shut, see? Because of the way that tapers in there. Now you know why I put out two parts to today's video because I figured this was going to happen. I wouldn't get this done, so at least I got half the video out. Gotta love it. Lawn needs it though. I think I always say that. Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So today I'm super excited because we're gonna do some lawn striping. You guys are always asking me, how come you don't stripe the lawn anymore, Alan? How come the lawn isn't striped? Why don't you stripe the lawn? Well, today I'm gonna do it using the Time Master Lawn Striper. And no, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this myself, got it from my local dealer. Today I'm gonna unbox it, hook it up, and then we're gonna use it as long as the sun will cooperate. Uh, we got a lot of rain coming in, but I think it's going to hit the east coast and we're going to be spared over by here on the west coast. So hopefully you'll be able to see some beautiful stripes. And I've let her grow now for six straight days. Usually I cut every three days. I've really let it grow out. So we should get some good striping action going up and down here on a St. Og. Also today I am testing um, Christmas lights. I ordered a bunch of new... Plug. I ordered some new stuff. Check it out. I'm trying to. I wanted to see what yellow might look like. I'm afraid this is going to look too Halloweeny. Um, and I'm also upgrading to C9s from C7s. All my old stuff. I love showing you guys my nasty garage. Black and decker. All my old stuff is under here. Right there. These things are stupid. Um, there's C7s under there and incandescent spotlights. Anyway, um, I'm going to try to use my old lights, but this house is just so much different um, and larger than my last house. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just revamp everything, get a whole fresh you know, plan laid out, trying to add some color in a little bit. Remember, we always dominate by being clean, simple, and classy. Definitely going to do some stuff with the palm trees, all that. So I'm actually going to probably mess with a little of that this weekend. I might throw a couple little clips in for that. Point being is that it's never too early to start your Christmas time domination plans. Never too early. One other thing uh, that I wanted to show you is I ended up getting the, the larger Coronas. I had, uh, when I ordered them originally, I ordered the smaller Coronas without realizing it. So I went ahead and got the larger ones. So when we compare to the uh, Felcos, it's gonna be more of a realistic review. So that is coming up. That's not sponsored either. I paid for all these because I have an addiction to uh, pruners. Oh, speaking of that, some of you had commented on my shoe collection back there and Yes, I do have a problem with shoes. That's only like a quarter. I have a complete closet full. I'm not gonna show you a picture because it'll show you how much how much of a problem I used to have. I'm a recovering shoe addict, but I probably have every pair of shoes in the Johnston and Murphy catalog from like 2007 to 2009. All right, so the first task at hand here is to get this unit unboxed and get it put on the mower. I'm gonna film all that, show you how that goes together. I've got a nice, 
thing of dry sand over there. Been, it's been chilling next to the Melorganite, getting well seasoned before it goes into its plastic tomb of doom, where it's gonna live in the dark for the rest of its life, rolling across my lawn in blindness. Hey, check that out. Not plastic, it's metal and it's red. That's kind of cool. Definitely beefier. I don't want to scratch it. It's got like some combs in there. Sweet. That's kind of cool. I'm really interested to see how this does on the St. Ag. very important that you install this with the hook up. I know it seems weird, but this thing is not perfectly symmetrical. It looks like it is, but it's not. That end down there is actually a little bit longer than this one. So if you do it upside down, if you put it on upside down, it will go down the road crooked. You want to make sure that you have it up here. Oh, one thing real quick before I get going, because I'm going to totally enjoy this mow. A lot of you have asked how the striping does just right out of the box. And actually, if you watch Ryan Knorr's channel, I'll link him in the description below. He's got a Time Master on, I think he's got Kentucky Bluegrass and Tall Fescue. It's definitely, you know, cool season grass. And his right out of the box with no striper stripes awesome. So, trying to conduct the YouTube filming here, buddy. So I would say that if you're up north, you know, if you get the striper, obviously it'll make things that much better, but these do stripe great right out of the box in cool season lawns. St. Augustine, not happening. Let's see how it does with the striper though.
Alright, uh, I'm not done cutting yet. I'm not even close. I still got to do all my fun edging and everything, but it looks like it's about to rain. So I want to go ahead and do a wrap up here. I'll try to get some stripes with the sun showing the right way so you can see what they look like, but essentially, you know, this is them. That's without the good sunlight. And then we're at the wrong end here. Let me go to the other end and show you what they look like here. Again, I'm not done cutting yet. There you go. That's what that's what they look like here, again, without the right sun, but still pretty good, I'd say. Now, do, some of you guys are going to ask me, does this one work better than the, the original Toro Lawn Striper that I had on my 21s and 22s? The answer is, so yeah, I'd say it does work better. Um, and the fact that on the St. Augustine here, I get really good stripes with just one pass. Now, you saw me doing two passes because I double cut, and I've always double cut. That's essentially what double fat stripes have always been about, is double cutting. Um, I just went ahead when I had only the 22 inch and made them double fat at the same time. But really, it was just about double cutting. I have been double cutting for years, and most of you guys know that. With this striper, though, on the St. Augustine, I actually got really good stripes, like I said, the first time. And then when I did the second time, it definitely defined the stripes even better. So, again, St. Augustine is not the most stripable grass. You guys all know that. Um, I'm telling you, though, if you had one of these on cool season grass, I, you'd probably get some really tight stripes. That's one thing I noticed with this. Because the mower's wider and the mower itself is heavier, and also the deck extends out from the wheels a little bit, what that does is it kind of takes the wheel marks out of the stripes a little more, so they're super tight all the way through. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I'll put the MSRP of that thing down there. I thought I think it was almost 200 bucks or something. Again, not cheap, but it's well worth it. I like it. It's a it's a good piece of equipment to have uh, with my Toro here. And uh, for those of you that have been asking, how come I haven't been striping? That's why. Now I'll get back to striping at least every other time or so. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the lawn. Okay, I'm going to turn everything off out back, okay? Sure. And then you can come and tell me what you Do think. They look gold. I don't want them to look too orange. That's the only thing. No, they don't look orange at all. They don't? No, okay. They do look goldy. They, they do look kind of gold. Yeah? So they'd have a nice, would that be a nice Christmas gold look? That's all right. But that's, that's see how you're on the end? That's kind of how they'll look if they were hanging down. And I actually don't mind them hanging down. You know, usually I put them up in the air, but if they hang down, it might, because the eaves are white. I do like it. I, you don't think it's kind of like the Hammond lights, do you? Ah, uh -huh, the yellow lights of Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if they're yellow or what. Yeah, right. The yellow street lights in Hammond. No, well, hey, well, then it might give you a, a little remembrance of Northwest Indiana, you know?